we need to do an audio test. Audio test. Hello. Hello. Are we recording? It is recording. Hello, I'm speaking. Yes. And I am from England. This is my British accent. Nice. Are we starting this whole thing over? Yep. All right, let's kick it. All right, can you state your name and who you're representing in the helicopter race? What? Uh, my name is Tim Rogers. I'm the founder of Action Button Entertainment, and I am, was, am the designer and director of Video Ball, which is available now for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam for PC. Okay, cool. And so the helicopter race already happened. Yeah. And we were going to pretend that it hadn't, but well, yeah. let's not pretend. Who, like... It already happened. Did. You were there. You uh, heard my predictions of how I'm going to lose, right? Yeah, you said that. I said I pinched a nerve in my butt <laughs> sleeping on the plane, right. which made my leg feel weird. Right. However, I was willing to say there was a chance I was going to win. However, I was also certain I was not going to win. Uh, I, I, I didn't say somebody's probably going to cheat because, you know, we're, we're racing. It's a bunch of game people. Mm. Game people like like designing games and they like designing levels right mm -hmm. yeah and what is game design really if not a way to trick a person from having a frictionless experience you know like to just right yeah you know constantly strive to do the impossible. Dragons are a manifestation of humankind's fear of the unknown. Where do the two meet and why? And also what we're trying to get at here is that like, what do you think in like 2,000 years people are going to be saying about helicopters? You know, a helicopter is this really interesting challenge against physics, right? Because you have this blade that spins in one direction, right? Which means the whole helicopter wants to spin in the other direction, right? That's what physics wants to do. And so when you pilot a helicopter, what you actually have to do is constantly control the flight of the helicopter against the counter rotation it wants to have. And so part of what you do when you steer a helicopter is you literally stop it from spinning the way it wants to spin. And I think that as an accomplishment against the impossible, that's like a beautiful metaphor, right? Here is this thing that wants to spin in both directions at the same time in a way that would be unflyable, but it's constant human effort that keeps it straight. And I think when we think about this 2,000 years in the future, we're going to marvel at the ingenuity of human beings to hack physics in one of the most unbelievably non-intuitive ways to create an object capable of a sheerly impossible kind of flight. Hi, my name's Nick Fortuno, and I'm representing Come Out and Play. That's nice, that's nice. I see myself as a revolutionary against the rise of virtuality. Like, I very much believe in physicality and the tactile. I do not believe the gaze is tactile. I think the gaze is a thing, it's important, but tactile is tactile. Tactile is ground, tactile is wind. Tactile is the experience of the pheromones and the energy of other people. And I think that the virtual is never really going to achieve that. There's this whole other side of the virtual, which is like the tagging of the world digitally. It's the creation of a cloud of digi digital reality around what we do physically. And I think that physical thing is only going to be here in a way that creates better and better experiences for people. So this VR thing, I want to stand at the front lines with a flag and a rifle, ready to hold it off with all of my power. Uh, okay, what are the prerequisites for watching television? Um, have you had much like experience with helicopters? I uh, have never been in a helicopter in my entire life. Okay. Okay. Well, um, okay. Let's get let's give him a chance to be on a helicopter right now. Right. Let's. We're gonna, Do you want to play that? We're gonna yeah. Let's okay, let's play yeah. the let's play the you're on a helicopter thing. So we're gonna put you on a helicopter. Close okay. your eyes. Basically, close, close your eyes, and we're gonna put you on a helicopter. You know? Yeah. Okay, here you are. You're airborne now, right? Okay. Uh, what do you see? Describe the the insides of this helicopter, or not? Just the sky? What, whatever you're seeing okay, out like there. Okay, like the helicopter is smaller than I thought it would be, okay. which is a little bit scary because it's like kind of narrow and it's really close to people. It's noisier than I thought too. I don't know how people stand this for a minute at a time, but you can just like look outside and it's like 
straight drop. I mean, you almost feel like you're flying a little bit, but like flying like the way like a butterfly flies, like just kind of hovering and stuttering. Okay. Um, I mean, it's crazy, uh, and like, and it's unstable in this like really like adrenaline producing way. But like, it's neat. I'm clinging to the side of this in a way because I don't want to fall out. But like, man, I wouldn't trade this for anything. <laughs> That's you know? we want to I don't know my That's purpose. Exactly in this uh, my name is Tony Pizza, and I am representing Indicate East. Oh, you're you're pretty confident with the Fitbit, okay? Cool. Yeah, I mean, look at this. It's quality. Now, now tell us what you know about helicopters. You know, um, I know they exist. I okay. know the helicopters exist. Okay. Uh, once I went to the Intrepid Museum, and I think there was a helicopter there, but you couldn't touch it, so I've seen them. But never, you've never been inside of a helicopter. <laughs> I've never been you've inside never a helicopter. Inside. I actually, kind of don't want to go onto a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> But I kind of like running races. Music, the turn. <laughs> so we like, don't actually want part of it. <laughs> I don't really want to. I want to win, but I don't want to win a helicopter ride. Okay. Yeah. How do you see? <laughs> how do you think either you'll change or the world will change after this journey of yours? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna win, and I'll have to overcome the fear of helicopters. Um, and uh, the world will become a better place because I will then inspire other people to overcome their fears right. by becoming champions in one mile foot races. Uh, that's like a real answer. Yeah. Thanks. This might, <laughs> this might be a good time to ask, do you trust us? Do you believe that we break this race? Part of that actually. So you're you're sort of aware of what the prize is. Yeah. The end goal. Can you tell us about that? Or what do you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to ride a helicopter around the Statue of Liberty. Uh, except, you know, I've just never had the money to pay for it. So getting a getting a free helicopter ride, uh, especially a solo where I can uh, gloat about being a winner, uh, would be really really huge and like really. If my seven-year-old self could see me now, you know, I think she'd be really happy. That happens to red. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's here. Do you want to try the closing the eyes? Imagine the, the helicopter. Okay, so okay. if you could like indulge this for a second. Close your eyes, you know. You're on it, you're a little, you're a little on it. No, 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 let's start with this. Yes. Okay, okay. Thanks. Okay, okay. Thanks. okay. Thanks. Oh, you know, that's, that's the birds. Yeah. Um, how do you, what kind of what kind of helicopter do you see? Uh, like a big one. Uh, yeah. It has details, color. It's like green. Uh, and the guy that's driving it is really hunky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how many how many how many rotor blades do you see? Like seven. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Got a lot of blades on this one. Nice. Yeah. Where are you going on this helicopter? Um, the Statue of Liberty and Eternal Glory. Nice. It's straight there. So, you're in this helicopter, you're potentially sitting, you're potentially laying down, you're potentially doing downward dog. Uh -huh. How do you feel about this potentially being the biggest peak in your lifetime? Um, I mean, I would say that that's probably going to be true. If I'm sitting in that helicopter, it's going to feel like the greatest. Yeah. Feeling like maybe the carrot is the winner here. I'm Mark Lieback. I'm with the Death by Audio Arcade. So could you tell us about your uh, your routine and how you were preparing for this race in terms of nutrition, 
and exercise, fitness, and um, like mental preparation. Oh yeah, I'm in an exclusive Soylent diet. Uh, no hard foods. Um, one food group. Uh, sleep until like 10 a.m. Solid like 12 hours of sleep. I think is like the key to to a healthy healthy runner's body. You know. Uh, minimal physical activity, you know, you got to conserve it all. So saving it all for that day. Um, you know, I don't want to like waste all my energy in this, the time leading up to the race. So yeah, pretty regimented, I'd say. Like, I'm pretty serious. <laughs> or how about there's a helicopter and he's exercising? Are you getting, are you getting as well? Yeah, helicopter. I have a helicopter. I have a helicopter. Alright. Right. Enjoy the water. There he goes. He's chasing that helicopter, you know? That's just that's that's it in a nutshell. Wow. Us chasing the helicopter. Wow, this has been truly truly uh, enlightening, yeah. <laughs> it comes back. Have you come back? Let's have you come back. That was that was good luck at that, that helicopter was, yeah, that at that out. point. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I. The secret is where those. Tony Cheatsa of Indicate East and uh, Gwyna Forgem Thrift. Gwyna Forgem Grift. We should bring printed maps, probably. So we know where we're going. Yeah, maybe we can shake the other people. <laughs> you guys should like get the signs and like have like any sign that has like an arrow saying like this way, like turn it around. Yeah. We have chalk. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so they had drawn. A chalk, they, they used colored chalk to draw on the ground at the starting line. Like purple and pink chalk, it's like baby castles, race starts here. And it's like, how friendly of them yeah. you know, to have drawn that. That's what and I thought. It turns out it was not friendly because <laughs> there was a, a point in the race where there was arrows drawn and it said, cross here. Right. Baby castles, cross here. And like it stuck in my head because it was at the starting line as well. I did not know it was them who had drawn uh, the outline. I thought that it was you who had drawn it. Uh, I should have known. So even even your guy, even the baby castles guy, he was there. He's like, oh, you gotta go this way. You gotta go this way. Cross the street. Cross the street. Uh, Tony Pizza. Yep. Went up it's two really, really fantastic. Um, all right, easy. Okay. Uh, all right, where is it? Holy shit! It's over. Over. So I'm standing here with the winner of the Baby Castles Get to the Chopper race, Nick Montfort, representing Synchrony. How, how did the race go? Well, it went well in the end. Uh, very, it was uh, hard fought. I had. Uh, uh, trouble even uh, initially overtaking uh, Nick had come out of play. Uh, he, uh, he took me once again, and uh, near the end, I was able to put in a little bit more, uh, get past, and uh, and actually just uh, just barely make the high five for the uh, for the finish. So 
Um, but it's you know it was a, it's a nice day, uh, good company, pleasant place. Uh, so all of that was in fun. What's your secret? How'd you do it? Um, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> got a helicopter up there. More profound. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, I get that's that's that is the answer. Um yeah, cool. So what are you about to go do now? Uh, so I've got to get on uh, the trauma as, uh, as we were discussing and uh, then head, head over to uh, Super Hot Ronnie All right. uh, and see what's up at Baby Castles. Cool. I didn't get to the chopper. You did not get to the chopper. Yeah. But, uh, I'm not going to be able to sleep for six months because I didn't get to the show. Well, I'm almost sad to hear that, but uh, you're saying you're, you're eventually going to get on a helicopter, though. Someday, yeah. I've got to. Yeah. I've got to. It's my dream. Yeah. I'll never own one, but I want to fly one. Yeah. In one. I'm sick. Here's another one. There is an inherent contradiction that we're playing games basically trying to destroy one another in exaggeratedly violent ways, yet we're congregating and bonding over it. We're running as fast as possible away from one another in an event that brings us together in the end. How do you resolve or at least comment on this contradiction? Yeah, I think I, I think it's a good question. I think that there's, I mean, you can look, you can find specific examples of games that are cooperative games, yeah. you know, and specific, you know, and then specific examples that seem to be sort of like purely competitive with no, without any, you know, without much aspect of social uh, connection, you know, things like this. But I think a lot, yeah, mostly, you know, games are, are um, uh, these sort of ruses that like, I mean, you know, like people don't, like families don't play Monopoly. Well, first, they don't play Monopoly in order to teach people about, you know, real estate, like landlord abuses and things like this, which is, which is what it was created for. But they certainly also don't uh, play Monopoly, like, in order to exhibit, like, dominance over other family members. I don't think. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> not in my family. <laughs> I mean, you know, we might have had our, had our issues, but <laughs> that was not one of them, you know. I don't think people do that. So, so you know, they're these, they're, like, in a certain sense, like, the, the competitive aspect can be a ruse, you know, that actually brings people together socially and gives them time to work together and see, you know, what they're interested in. I feel like we need to get revenge. I just need to beat more people at video ball. I'm, I'm here in New York. I flew all the way here from Oakland, all the way from the other side of the country, from the Pacific to the Atlantic. And all I did, I only got to, I only got to hustle, what, like eight suckers at video ball? It's got to be more than that. I got to be at least triple digits. So what do you say tomorrow night we get like a hundred people here and I beat them all? What do you think? I think that sounds good. Go home with a, with a belly full of victory. It's no substitute for the chopper. But I think the view from that plane will be pretty nice. Get to flip off New York as I leave. No, I love New York. I'm not going to flip off New York. I'm just going to win a whole lot of video ball. It's going to be ice cold. Guaranteed. 